Hi, I'm Nathan Hort, CTO of Follow My Boat, and today I'd like to tell you a little bit about blockchains. A blockchain is a kind of database, but what's unique about a blockchain database is that whereas a normal database has to be tracked by a single computer and that computer is trusted to manage the database, in a blockchain database, we have a decentralized system where there are many computers which are managing the database so that no single computer has to be trusted. An example of a blockchain in the real world would be the Bitcoin digital currency system, which uses a blockchain to track balances of Bitcoins. Now, blockchain systems are typically comprised of two major components. The first component is the peer-to-peer -peer network. This is the mechanism by which the many computers which manage the database communicate new changes to that database, which are called transactions. The second major component of a blockchain system is the database itself. And this database stores the complete history of transactions and the order in which those transactions occur. Now let's examine each of these components in more detail. Now, a peer-to-peer -peer network is a computer network made up of many computers, which we call nodes. And these computers simply connect to each other, more or less at random, and this allows us to have a decentralized network, which means that there's no single point of failure and no particular node has power to censor information from the other nodes, since all of the other nodes could simply propagate that information around it. So in a P2P network, when a new message appears, it is sent to any of these nodes and it doesn't really matter which. In fact, usually it'll be sent to many of them to start with. And then each node sends the message to all of its neighbors in the network, and each neighbor does the same. So very quickly, you will have messages that propagate through the entire network. And this is how messages get shared on a P2P network. Now, an interesting property of this is that because the message appears somewhere, and it actually will typically appear in several places at once to begin with, it's pretty difficult to tell exactly where the message came from after it has appeared on the network, which means that, again, we see censorship resistance. We can't censor messages based on who sent them. So that's the P2P network. The other component of a blockchain is the database itself. Now, a blockchain database is constructed as a history of transactions, which are modifications to the database. So what's at the beginning of history? Well, we have what is called the genesis block, which is basically an empty state, which everyone can agree on because it's so simple. Now, at the beginning, we have the genesis state, and everyone agrees on it. Then, people begin submitting transactions to allow modifications to that state. So, somebody creates a transaction and broadcasts it through the network. Again, due to the P2P technology, it's very difficult to tell who sent it, and it's difficult to censor it. So that message, that transaction, propagates through the network and gets added to a pool of pending transactions. As transactions accumulate in this pool, we begin to create blocks of transactions. Now, when a new block is added to the network, it group 
groups transactions together, it establishes a consensus of the order in which the transactions occurred, and then a cryptographic signature is added to the end of the block. Now, a cryptographic signature has several properties which are critical to the security of this database. First of all, the signature establishes a link to the previous block. Now, in the first block, this is a link to the genesis state. In all subsequent blocks, it will be the link to the block that preceded it. So that's the first important property of these signatures. The second important property is that if any of this information in this transaction history within the block were to change, then this signature would no longer be valid, and every node in the network would be able to see that this block had been tampered with. As more blocks accumulate in the network, if anyone goes back in history and changes any of the old transactions or the genesis state itself, then the signature on all blocks following the change will also be invalid. This means that a blockchain establishes an unchangeable permanent record of changes to the database. When a new node appears in the P2P network and connects to some of the other nodes, the other nodes which have been in the network before fill that new node in on the history of the database. So they send it all of the blocks since Genesis so that that new node can replay the history of transactions and come to the same conclusion as to the current state of the database as all other nodes in the network. So that's how blockchain technology works. Thank you for listening.